Today I'm going to show you the basics of sashiko stitching, which is a little bit like hand quilting, and it's often done on pre-printed fabric such as this. In this case, this is coasters, that they have a back and a front that will be sewn together afterwards. And the fabric is printed with a water-soluble ink that after you are done your stitching, you'll be able to wash it out with warm water. This makes for a really easy first project in Sashiko. So what you're going to do is take your Sashiko thread and cut about an 18 to 24 inch piece. The smaller the piece, the better because it is less likely to tangle, but you don't want it too short. You don't want to have to make too many stops and starts. The next thing you'll need is a sashiko needle, which is quite thick. It has a small eye and it's quite long. And the reason that you want it long is that you're going to be using a sashiko thimble. So this is kind of a strange looking thimble, but what it happens is it goes on your center finger like this and rests against the palm of your hand. And you're gonna use it basically as a home base for the fat end of your needle. So, Tie a knot in the end of your thread and come up on your very first horizontal row. You want to do all of your horizontal and vertical, if you have them, stitches first before you start to do diagonals. This is for a couple of reasons. Uh, you don't want to go on the diagonal because you don't want the fabric to stretch or shrink up on the bias. You want to create um, a nice horizontal and vertical web. And also you wanna do all of one direction first so that if you have crisscrosses such as this, all of the vertical stitches are sitting over top of the horizontal stitches or vice versa. It doesn't matter which one you start with so long as you're consistent. So you do all in one direction first and then all in the next direction. So once you've come up from the backside through your very first stitch, you can see here that I came up at the very beginning of that stitch you're going to rest your needle in the palm of your hand with the thimble. You can see they're a little dense there, so the needle will sort of sit there and grab your needle with your other fingers. And you're gonna be doing a rocking motion with the fabric where you load the fabric up onto the needle. So to do, I, I'm working on this very first stitch. So I'm going to take this needle the end is, it's hard to see because of how I have to hold it in order to stitch, but the end of the needle is resting there against the palm of my hand. And then you rock the fabric and come out at the beginning of the next stitch. Then you rock the fabric down and go out the end of the second stitch and up at the beginning of the third stitch. Down at the end of the third stitch up at the beginning of the fourth stitch, down at the end of the fourth stitch, up at the beginning of the fifth stitch. And what you can see here is I'm just loading the fabric onto the needle. You have a nice long needle. I would, in this case, for something this size, I would continue all the way to the end before I pulled the fabric through. I won't do all of it now so the video isn't too long, but basically you're just rocking, back and forth, coming in and out and trying to be as accurate as you can, but most importantly, consistent. If you decide that you're going to come out a little bit before the stitch and go in a little bit after, just make sure that you do that consistently all the way across the fabric so that your, your stitches are all the same size. So down and up. I'm going to stop here about halfway just so I can show you what it looks like to pull it through. You have this bunched up fabric and you just pull your needle through and you want to make sure what, this is really important with Sashiko. When you pull the thread through, before you pull it taut at this end, stretch the fabric out. See how it sort of has, it's almost crepey where it's ruched up. You want to stretch that out nice and flat and then pull your thread to make a nice tidy stitch. You don't want to be too tight because what will happen is as you work on your piece it will start to crunch up and get smaller. It will ease itself in and you don't want to do that. So you're going to work across and then from this row you would move up on the back side across here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to skip these stitches but I'm going to come out where you would have on the end so I can show you the back side when you're continuing on to the next 
row. If you come out, actually I'll show you here. See how I've left these stitches between the rows a little loose? You wanna do that so that when you stretch your fabric out, it has some extra thread there for you to be able to stretch out your stitches. And what will happen when you wash this piece gently with warm water, these, piece, these stitches will sort of puff up almost. They look kind of like a piece of rice when they are done and they'll make a beautiful texture. But it, the more you wash them, especially if it's something like a tea towel, the more they will shrink up and the more texture you will get on the surface. So you need to be cognizant of that and give yourself a little bit of extra ease in your thread. And that is the basics of Sajiko. When you come to the end of the row, all you need to do is just whip your stitches in the backside. It won't come loose. Um, those will set in quite nicely. Uh, and another tip for you, don't iron your piece before you start because it will make it very difficult to wash out the thread afterwards. So that is the basics of Sashiko.